Okay, good morning all. It is um, the last chapter of our Purified uh, Seven Times Over training. Uh, we are in chapter 11 and we'll be discussing Seated in Christ. So you guys can follow us in your manuals today or in your books. Uh, we'll be wrapping up on the, uh, what is this now? This is episode 21. So we'll be wrapping up on the previous 20 episodes that we've had. So yes, thank you for, for, for being with us through this whole process and we just thank the Heavenly Father for the guidance that He's given us and given you and um, trust that you've moved from glory to glory in Him and through Him and through the guidance of the Holy Spirit. So let us open in prayer and then we'll get straight into it. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, we just come before you this morning and we surrender ourselves unto Thee. We surrender our spirit man, we surrender our minds our hearts unto you, Holy Spirit, that you lead us and guide us today. Holy Spirit, that you'll touch every single heart of every listener, every person listening this morning, that they will be inspired by your word, Father, that they will be drawn to your word, that they'll be drawn by your Holy Spirit as you tug on their hearts, Father, to take them deeper, Father, and to position them today, Father. So we thank you for a positioning today, Father, that as People press in, Father, that they will take their position in Christ and that they'll be seated in Christ. So we just welcome you, you here, Abba Father. We welcome you here, Holy Spirit. And we ask that you will take control of this recording, take control of every single person's life right now, Father, as they surrender unto thee. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay, so I can't believe it's 21 episodes later. Um, we are partly out of lockdown, everybody's almost back to normal, so that's why we're doing a pre-recording today and we will load it onto YouTube as you will see. So, yeah, I'm excited, I'm excited. Um, on the WhatsApp group you will see that I've shared a document of new information that I've typed out that's not in the manual, that you can just go and print out. We're going to work from that a little bit today. Um, and yes, let's just get right into it. So. I'm just going to recap on the whole course that we have done to this point and today you'll understand, fully understand as we finish off the, the prophetic meaning of the image on the front cover. So the Purified Seven Times Over process um, course that we have done and I, I truly believe and yes we would like to receive if you've got any testimonies, any new revelation, Anything that Abba has shown you during this course, during share this it period, with share it with us. Mm -hmm. You can email it to me, linda at ladyrose.co.za. And if you don't have the manuals, you can go and purchase either the hard copies or the um, e-books on our website. There's one for international, ladyroseglobal.com or um, ladyrose.co.za in South Africa. So you can go and purchase it there. It's printable, PDF, um, the manuals you can go and purchase on this site. So... The front cover, as you will see, is the white, and then the white cloth gets stained and it becomes red, and then the door and the seven um, cups on the side, which is seven blood offerings, the seven doves. So the whole process, everything that we have spoken about within this course is displayed on the front cover. Now, this morning, I woke up early and I just started praying and, and um, asking Abba how to end this off and how and immediately drew my attention to the front cover. And he showed me this example of this whole course that we've done. If we go back to the tabernacle, the physical tabernacle, this whole process from the outer courts into the inner courts, the holy place and the most holy place, how you move from the outer courts into the most holy place, the holy of holies where we're going to end off today, the mercy seat. Um, where the priest had to go in through mm -hmm. after he has gone through the whole process. Abba showed me it's the whole process of a bride preparing herself. The moment first she meets her husband, then a bride in, in, in the word represents it's men and women it's us. and Yeshua mm -hmm. is the bridegroom. It's, it's the body. So it's the body. So first we come to salvation, the bride meets her husband to be. Then there's that season of um absolute adornment and being in love and you're so excited and we pray every day and we read every day and we want to tell the whole world um, about Jesus and that we've come to salvation and then the, 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 there's an engagement and then there's a preparation there's a preparation period so from the outer court you meet Yeshua you come to salvation and then there's an engagement that took place and then there's, there, there's a, 
preparation period for you to be prepared to become the bride, to be married. So in, in the natural, um, you go look for your dress, you prepare, you get the venue, you get everything ready for that perfect day. And everything that you are preparing for that perfect day is because you love the person that you're going to marry. Mm. Now it's the same with purified seven times over, going through sanctification, going through um, living a life set apart and, and holiness. So a bride in the natural getting married has got eyes for no one else. She's not interested um, in anybody else but the man that she's going to get married to. So there's a, there's a season where you build relationship and this preparation. So it's, just, it's the same with what we have gone through at this in this process of purification. Because a lot of people will say, Yo, but you don't need to go through purification. You don't need to because Jesus has done it all. Yeshua has done it all. Yes, he has done it all. But in the same way that you move from being engaged and preparing and going into covenant, the moment you get married to your husband, the whole relationship change. The whole, your surname changes. Everything else changes. What, what, what is his is yours. What is so in like manner, I'm not make that so in like manner you take on the name of the Father. You take on the name of the Son. When, yes. when, 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 you, when you're committing covenant with the Father and with the, the Holy Spirit and Jesus Christ, it's taking on His name. So, so the whole process of going through that is, is represented on the outside. We cannot enter into the most holy place, which is the door, except through the blood of Jesus Christ. And I'm going to explain it to you now. So that is why the bride gets clothed in white, her sins gets washed away, and the only way that we as the children of God, this priestly bride, can now enter into the most holy place and dwell with the Father continuously, which is our, our um, I don't want to say our end goal, which is our desire, is to dwell with Him completely, to, uh, it, all the time, to sit on His lap, to hear His heartbeat, to walk with Him like Enoch did, to have this relationship with Him, you go through this process of purification. So I'm going to read um, Hebrews 4, verse 15 to 16. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Mm. Let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace, that we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Now in Hebrew, the throne of grace is the mercy seat within the Holy of Holies. That is what, what um, um, the throne of grace means. The Hebrew word is kapureth. I hope I'm saying it correctly. And the root of this word is kapar meaning repentance and atonement. Mm. So if we stay before the throne of grace boldly, we can do so because we have prepared ourselves through repentance and atonement, which is Jesus Christ. We do not get, go there empty-handed, and we, we, when we approach the throne of Christ, the mercy seat, the ark of the covenant, with repentance and atonement, we approach God, the righteous judge of all, to receive grace and mercy in our time of need. Now let's look at the definition of atonement. Atonement is reparation for an offense or injury, the reconciliation of God and humankind through the sacrificial death of Jesus Christ, Yeshua. So who is our atonement? Yeshua, okay? Um, obsolete and reconciliation. So that is what atonement means. What is repentance? The action or process of repenting, especially for misdeeds, or mortal, moral shortcomings. So our part in approaching the throne of grace is repentance through the atonement, which is Jesus Christ. Yes. So you cannot come to the throne of grace. That's what the scriptures say. Let us come boldly to the throne of grace. We obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. So we approach the throne of, throne of grace through repentance and atonement, because that's how the high priest approached the throne of grace. Um, I'm going to read to you, um, no, let's just look for that scripture. scripture. So through this whole process, through our repentance and the atonement of Jesus Christ, we approach the throne of Christ. We can come before the throne of Christ. We can enter into the most holy place. Um, let's quickly read the uh, meaning of boldly. Eastward in the Eastward um, in the Greek translation is a, a company a company meant to approach with So a lot of people will say you come to salvation and um, we can approach the throne of Christ boldly 
Okay, but they miss the part that means boldly means to be accompanied and to approach with. So who do you approach the throne of grace with and through? Through Yeshua, Jesus Christ. We can only approach the throne of grace and stand in the most holy place once we have gone through this process like we have spoken through, like the priest has gone through, this priestly bride has gone through this process of sanctification and purification just as the priest did because of the blood of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. So he accompanies us through his blood. He is the door and we can now approach this throne of grace that, that, that they speak about in Hebrews 15 verse 16. Um, let's quickly see. Many people quote the scripture and says that when Jesus died, he did it all. And now gives us the right approach to the throne of grace boldly, which is true in words, but not in understanding and action of heart. When we read that scripture and we understand the true meaning of how this passage was written, we will see that the approach to the throne of grace, you have to go through Christ, through a heart of repentance and a life of atonement. Let me explain. As you read, as you will read, the high priest could not enter the most holy place without going through a process of repentance and make atonement for the sins of the people through the blood of the sacrifice. Now let's read that scripture again. For we do not have a high priest who cannot sympathize with our weaknesses, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. We cannot access the throne of grace if we do not enter in through the Son of God, our Lord Jesus Christ Yeshua, who must make atonement for our sin through His very own blood. So our part is, He has already done the atonement through His blood. Our part is the process of repentance, like I've read to you before. The process of repentance is the process of, of sanctification. It's the process of that you grow from glory to glory. So in the end, the word says in Ephesians 5 verse 27, and we're going to speak about that. I just want to read it to you quickly. Um, so while she's, while she's looking for that scripture, like in like manner, the high priest would, would go through a, a preparation to get into the Holy of Holies, to prepare himself, to atone, atone in preparation, uh, um, to get into the Holy of Holies, uh, where he would represent the people. All right, so there was there was sacrifice. He had to bring a blood offering. He had to bring a sacrifice. He had to light the menorah. There was the showbread. There was the altar of incense. There was the washing basin. There was this whole process that took place that the high priest had to had to do in order to 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 uh, to, to step into the holy of holies to, in order to be able to go in there and not drop dead. All right, to to come before to come before the Lord and and atone. Uh, atone for the sins of the people through the blood of, 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 of an animal. That no longer takes place. Christ paid that price. His blood atoned us once and for all. He atoned everybody through through the blood of, blood of Christ. So now, once we, we've come to a place of repentance, the blood atones us, giving us then, you can say, the legal right, or giving us access to the Father through the blood of Yeshua, through the blood of Jesus Christ. So Ephesians 5 verse 27 says, and to, and to present her to himself as a radiant church, without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish, but holy and blameless. Then later on in Revelation 19 verse 7 you read, Let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory, for the wedding of the Lamb has come, and his bride has made herself ready. So there is a part for us, there is a part that we have to bring to the table, if I can say that. Yeshua has done the atonement. He has given his blood. He has laid down his life. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. So when somebody goes and sits down, it means it is done. It is accomplished. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. So through his atonement and his blood, with our part going through repentance and purification and sanctification, we can always also get into the position where we are then seated in Christ in heavenly places. So I always say that that's the scripture that says we are seated in Christ. When you come to salvation, the very first day that you are, I'm going to ask the question, just for you to think a little bit, are you already seated in Christ the moment, the moment, the very day that you come to salvation, are you seated in Christ? 
Or is it something that you grow into? Yeah. Is it something that you grow into a place of authority, um, a place of relationship, a place of dying to self, a place of surrendering, a place of 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 um, just loving him and just uh, I don't know I don't know the words to to describe that, but it's that you cannot take a baby a baby that is just born that baby will not walk immediately, we will not run immediately, we will not be able to rule immediately. It's the same with us that is born into the kingdom of God. Mm -hmm. It is this process of growing into our identity, growing into this position of authority, growing into this position of fulfilling on earth what He has called us for, what He has created us for, the day that He formed us in our mother's womb. So when you come to salvation, you strive to, you grow from glory to glory, you go through this process of growing, um, sanctification, purification, as you move closer to Him, like a bride um, meeting a, a husband to be the very first time, you are so in love with that person, you'll do anything to please Him. Even, and it's the same in our relationship with Jesus Christ, with Yeshua, that we must be, and that is why the word says in Revelation that we must not lose our first love. Um, he must always remain the one that our eyes are focused on, no matter what storms are going on around us. So this morning, when I woke up, we're going to end off later on the session where I was truly showing me that in this time, the priestly bride is going to take up her position. Now, with the Ark of the Covenant and being seated in Christ, we're going to close off later on with Psalm 91 to explain to you what it truly means to walk in covenant mm -hmm. and, and, and dwell in His presence continuously on earth as it is in heaven. I'm not saying we will not, there will never be trials and tribulations, we will not face difficult times, but there's a blessing which we will, which we will get to. Now, last year, September, and today I understand the fullness of it. So sometimes Allah will ask us to do things prophetically, um, and we don't always understand the fullness of it. We must just be obedient. So yesterday we had a conversation where Allah told us to do something, and then we always tend to say, but okay, we must do this, but we don't have that. Or we must do this, but this doesn't make sense. Look at the physical constraint before uh, actioning the spiritual, the spiritual, the prophetic, symbolic requirement that our Father is asking you to do. So the word says obedience is better than sacrifice. So when God speaks obey, that's what we've always seen, even if it doesn't make sense, and then as you obey and you walk it out, the understanding always comes and then the revelation comes. So last year when we were in Israel, um, we were a group of 10 ladies. Um, I don't just go to Israel, uh, meaning that buy stuff. The first time we did, you're so excited, you buy everything. But after that, I've learned. So I always ask, I want to say, what, what must I bring back home? What do you want me to buy? What prophetically, what's the meaning of this tour? What do you want to teach me on this on this journey? It's not a tour, we do it as a journey. And he spoke to me a lot about covenant in last, last year, September, while we were there. And then he said to me two things. Uh, we've got a, a home church. We need to bring back covenant rings for all the children. And I need to buy the Ark of the Covenant and bring it back home. I actually wanted to have it here this morning. So I did that. And I brought the, uh, I bought the Ark of the Covenant, a small one, and I brought it back home. And only today I understand that Abba was preparing us, not just me, mm -hmm. not just the ladies on the on the tour. Globally, he was preparing his his, his priestly bride, his, his, his sons and daughters to enter into covenant. Now, there's a, there's a difference of salvation between entering into covenant. Now, let's take it engagement. You don't have the rights being engaged to someone as you have by being married to someone. So that is the difference of covenant. Covenant also means um, when somebody goes, two people goes into covenant, they both give 100%. It's not a 50-50 contract, it's a 100-100 contract. So, so it's, it's, it's a contract, it's, it's like a contract. So the engagement, yes. is, the engagement is, a, is a commitment, mm -hmm. all right? And that commitment is made between the two, between the two parties, um, which, which represents basically your salvation. You commit your life to Jesus Christ. And as you move into covenant, it's the signed contract then that says, okay, Everything, everything that is on this contract is between the two of us is yours and mine. And that's what the Father wants to say. Come deeper. Come and see everything that I have available for you within covenant that nobody has a right to take away from you. 
So it's, it's, it's taking it to the next level, the next step. It's not just a, an agreement or a, a, a commitment anymore. It's now a contractual government. The word is a go governance. It's a contractual guideline uh, of covenant and governance over your life as the Father draws you deeper and closer into the secret place, closer into the heart of the Father, closer into relationship with Him and says, okay, now let's have... Let's have this friendship. Let's have this relationship. Let's have this understanding. Let's have this intimacy between you and the Heavenly Father like, like never before. And that draws you into the secret place. Okay, so covenant is, like, like I said, is 100% from both sides. When people go into covenant in the natural, both give 100%. Mm -hmm. So Yeshua gave His life so that we can have access to the throne of grace for the ultimate reason that we can enter back into covenant with God the Father, with our Father, like it was in the Garden of Eden. Remember everything that Yeshua did on the cross and the whole process that he's gone through, why he was born, there's so much, there's so much that, that at this moment that we are discovering even, even deeper revelation, he came to restore what the first Adam has lost. Okay, so, so being engaged does not give you the same rights as being in covenant. So being a child of God is not the same as being as grown into a son, a mature priestly bride, a son and a daughter of God. It will not give you the same rights, but you are still His children. We are still all um, going to heaven one day. Mm. So now I've lost my, um, my train of thought that I wanted to share with you. Um, so, okay, so now we were in Israel. So Abba said, bring the Ark of the Covenant back home. So I brought it back home, and in this process, from if we go and look now from September to where we are, what we went through, um, um, Shavuot, moving into Sukkot, Shavuot is the grain offering, Sukkot is the fruit offering, and the preparation of the bride that's taking in, in between of preparing her dress and preparing all these, like the word that I've shared with you guys. So we went through a preparation of our hearts, yeah. our inner man, our soul man, we dealt with certain things that only God could see. It was this, this set-apart time between us and the Father, and now we're in the process of preparing our dress, moving into, into Sukkot, the Feast of Tabernacles and all those. So... Preparing a dress is something that everybody can see. Preparing your heart is something so intimate that only you and the Father can see. So we've come out of this time of intimacy with Him where He was preparing our hearts. He was removing every obstacle. He was removing every false God that we carried within us. He was removing every um, burden, every unforgiveness, every everything that we had to deal with in the set-apart time. And now He's preparing us to show us to the world because the dress everybody can see okay so when a bride walks down the aisle the people do not see her heart they see her dress so what does that mean so now in this last few months or time or season only our nice that is preparing this, this this the sons and the daughters this priestly, priestly bride so the world can see his glory on them so the world will not see the preparation that we have gone through in our inner rooms with the Father, with the Holy Spirit and through the Word. He was washing us with His Word. He was preparing us. He took us through this process of sanctification, purification. The world is only going to see the, manifest, the manifested power and presence of God on our lives, which represents like a dress. So Abba is preparing us to present us to this world. Why? Not because of who you are, of what we can do, but for this last end time harvest that we need to gather. Isaiah 60 says, Arise and shine for your light has come. The glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Those who are in darkness shall be drawn to the rising of your light. It is not your light. It is the light of Yeshua Jesus Christ that is rising within us. So those who are in darkness will be drawn to this light. This, this, this priestly company of sons and daughters that are busy arising in this Amen. hour and that, that, that those who are in the darkness will be drawn to the rising of their lights so that we can do the work of this end time harvest that we need to bring in. So yes, once again, it's not a process for everybody. It is not something that everybody will understand. Mm -hmm. It is truly for those who are willing to say, here, here I am, Lord, send me. Here I am, Lord, I'm willing to lay down my life for the sake of your kingdom. Because that is what covenant is. Covenant is Yeshua laid down his life. So you bring 100% to say, I lay down my life. And that is not to say that you're going to be 
martyred or killed or murdered, that is not everybody's cup to drink. If, that is something you need to speak to the Father about. What is it that you need to lay down? What is it that He needs that He wants you to lay down? Let's say, for instance, your 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 husband is, is not safe, or your wife is not safe, and the enemy is using or that, children. or your children, and the enemy is using that to keep you busy. You are praying about that continuously. You are focused on that continuously. And the Father might be asking you, lay it down. Lay it down before me. You can't save them anyway. Your prayers, through your prayers, He can move, and through your prayers, He can move in their lives. But lay it down. Don't let it consume you. Like Peter that stepped out of the boat when Yeshua was walking on the water. While he focused on him and he looked into his eyes, he did not notice the storms around him and he moved in the supernatural by walking on the water. He was actually moving in a different realm at that stage. But the moment he took his eyes off Yeshua and he focused on the natural realm around him, he started sinking. And that is what it means to long for intimacy, is to keep your eyes Focus on Him, not on the things around you. And as you focus on Him, He will draw you closer and closer. You will move in the supernatural. He will sanctify you, He will purify you. He will help you, He will train you, He will equip you so that we can move in this hour where it is arise and shine for your light is come. Where the world will see the glory of God right, that is risen upon us. Not your glory. The, the company that is arising now and that is busy coming forth in this hour will not seek fame and glory. They will not be concerned about attracting crowds. They will not be concerned about getting the glory. Most of them will pray for people in, I don't want to say in secret, but behind closed doors, they will be healed, legs will grow, arms will grow, um, cancers will fall out of their bodies, people will fall down and start to worship Yeshua and accept Him as their Lord and Jesus, as, as, as their Lord and Savior, and you won't even see it on Facebook. You won't even see it on maybe on a YouTube channel. Because these people that, that God has been prepared live only for Him. We live and strive only to please Him. We are not here to please man, to, to gain um, approval of man. To, to, we're, not, we're not living for that because we have died to self. Galatians 2 verse 20. It's no longer I who live, but it's Christ who lives in me. And by faith we live, we live this life on earth. So this company arising with His glory risen upon them. His love will, will, will just flow, liquid love will flow through them and people will be drawn to that. The warning of that is the following. And I had a dream last night where I was speaking to Quentin later where I said, it feels like um, people are draining me. It's that, it's that everybody, everybody wants something. Everybody wants a piece, wants to know, wants to... <laughs> and last night I actually had a dream where this um, man, funny, I don't know how to explain it, it's almost like a, like, a, like a liquid jelly type of thing, man was clinging onto me. And as I was walking and working with the people, I, I was getting tired. It was as if he was invading my personal space. And I started getting so overwhelmed because this thing was invading my personal space. And when I woke up this morning... Abba said to me, that is the, that is the warning that we, as the, as in ministry, as the children of God presenting Him, need to be aware of. That our hearts are so for the people that they need to come into salvation, to teach them the truth, to, to lead them, them unto Christ. That we need to be careful that the enemy don't send people to drain us, to cling to us. In the end, in the, in the end we need to always refer them back to, to Yeshua Jesus, but... But the enemy will always try and send someone into your life. And maybe this is a word for someone out there. Send sure. someone into your life that becomes so needy and clingy um, and that it will, it will drain mm. you. It will try and drain you if you don't use discernment because our part is only to give them the gospel, to pray for them. Our parts are not to create followers but to train disciples. Well, the that word is what says, to do. teach a man, you know, that's, that's why these wise words have been said so many times before, is teach a man to fish, yes. all right? Uh, don't fish for him, but first teach him, teach him to fish, and then, and then the person should fish for themselves, to con continue, continue fishing and seeking for themselves, having all the equipment to fish, obviously the equipment being, being the word, so that, so that they are not dependent on you to come every time they're hungry, but they, that they are dependent on the word 
and on the Father and on, on Christ Jesus every time that they are hungry. So they they need to they need to put the line in, line in the water. They need to uh, uh, put the focus on the word. They need to get into the word. They need to start seeking. They need to start praying. They need to start asking the Father for the interpretation of their dreams, interpretations of their visions, and and, and what the Holy Spirit is saying. Uh, yes, there is a teaching process. Um, uh, as 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 babes suckle, there is a there is a growing process, and 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 I think that's the warning that Linda says is there's nothing wrong with that process, but there there are there are times and there are periods where people people cling to or people just don't want to grow up, people just don't want to mature in Christ. People people get so codependent on 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 what on what uh, leaders are saying and what. The leaders in their lives are saying that they don't seek it for themselves. And that's why we keep saying is that go and search it for yourself. You know, we'll, we'll bring a word, we'll bring a, a scripture, or we'll bring some, uh, uh, some revelation on a matter or two, and then go and make it your own um, so that you are not codependent on, but you were guided in the right direction. Um, because, you know, sometimes people can get so, so draining, so draining. I remember uh, there, was a, there was a time where, where the interpretation of dreams, you know, you receive phone calls and WhatsApps and SMSs and emails every single day. I'm talking if this was a few years ago, every single day. Um, and and <laughs> it, it, it started draining you to a point that you said, you know, I need to detach myself and make sure that these people can uh, hear from the Father. And if you don't detach yourself um, politely, um, respectfully, um, and obviously with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, you'll find yourself entrapped in, in keeping other people busy and interpreting other people's stuff and, and helping others and not spending time with the Father yourself or being so distracted that you're busy with the things of man and, and, and other people's stuff. You're not busy with the things of the Father. That's a warning. Yeah, so that was the warning that Abba gave me. And with that, what Quentin said is, uh, what I shifted that my focus from interpreting people's dreams and visions and, and words that they got to teaching them how to do it Jesus. themselves. Mm -hmm. um, I would help them the first time and I would say, let's say for instance, somebody dreamed about a cat. Um, I'm not a big fan of dream books because there's nothing wrong with them because there's, there are some very good dream books out there. But uh, let's say for instance, somebody dreams about a cat. Um, I love cats. I love lions and cats. And so for me, it's something positive. But someone else might have had bad experience with cats and for them it's negative. So then I will always try and teach them. So I don't interpret their dreams anymore. I try and teach them on how to do it themselves. So by the second time if somebody asks me, I would send them and say, you go and pray about it first and come to me and tell me what Father is saying to you. Mm -hmm. Because He speaks to us. So yes, this is the time and the season and this is where I want to get to where the children of God needs to be unveiled. Those of us who are already unveiled, those of us who, who know Him, those of us who, who seek Him, who, who understand the Word, we need to help those who are still veiled to be unveiled so they can see and hear for themselves. There's going to come a time where we cannot find a friend, where you cannot find the pastor, where you cannot go and sit in counseling and ask somebody else to interpret your dreams or to help you with your issues. We need to train the people to go to the Father themselves. And that is why with the mercy seat. Now let's look at um, the mercy seat within the Holy of Holies. Um, the Ark of the Covenant, the, the throne of grace is Hebrews 9 verse 3 to 5. Behind the second veil there was another tabernacle. The inner one or second section known as the Holy of Holies. Having the golden altar of incense and the Ark of the Covenant <coughs> covered entirely with gold. This contained a golden jar which held the manna and the rod of Aaron that sprouted and the two stone tablets of the covenant inscribed with the Ten Commandments. And above the ark were the golden cherubim of glory. I was showering, I was shadowing the mercy seat. But we cannot now go into detail about all these things. So that's Hebrews 9 verse 3 to 5. Now interesting, or oh, for me, behind the second veil there was another tabernacle. Okay, so when a bride in the natural prepares herself, you now in the in the Western culture, like the ways that you, we used to get married, you go in with a veil, then you walk walk up to the the altar where the um, pastor is standing to to marry you. So now if we take it into the spiritual, 
when we as a bride prepare ourselves and we come to the place where the, the, before the Holy of Holies, there's a veil that was torn the day that Yeshua died on the cross. The veil that separated man from the presence of God from man. So that veil was torn. But sometimes we, not sometimes, we are still veiled with certain beliefs and ways that we see things. Until that moment we have completely died to self, you come before this place and you are unveiled. It's, it's as if, I don't know who's ex ever experienced that, where you will read a scripture or you will listen to a teaching over and over and then one moment, it's like this light goes on and, oh, I've never seen that. Now I understand. Now I understand what okay. happened. You were unveiled. So I truly pray and believe that there will be an unveiling taking place in, in this next hour, if we can call it that, in this next season, in this next, um, I don't know how much time we've got left, but there's an unveiling that's taking place. There's understanding coming. There's revelation coming of the word. So there's that unveiling that is coming. So once the veil is removed, there's a ceremony and then the bride and the bridegroom goes into this covenant relationship. So by moving into the most holy place, dwelling with God continuously, that's covenant. So there's a shift in your relationship from engagement to covenant. There's authority that comes by marrying someone, contractual, and just being engaged to someone. So what Abba is doing is with um, from last year, September to now, he was preparing us to move into this deeper place of authority, this deeper place of knowing who he is and knowing who we are. This place of unveiling, this final process of, of um, I don't know, preparation, sanctification. Now, what he said to me is, once you are in covenant, once you've gone through this process, when I'm married to Quentin, I cannot marry him again. I cannot go through this process of preparing my wedding day and preparing and being engaged. And I cannot marry him again. I'm already married to him. So what Abba is saying, don't go back. Um, I used to do that in the beginning a lot when Abba took, me, took us through this process. I got stuck in the process of um, sanctification, purification, holiness, everything. I would, I would repent if I just, Look skew at somebody. I got stuck in this mode of repentance in which we have to be. We must always repent. That's not what I'm saying. What he's saying, once you have shifted, once your relationship has shifted into covenant, you are married, you are you are you are with your husband. There's a different there's a different um atmosphere around that uh, around that. So now what the enemy does is he wants to keep us from that covenant relationship and he wants to get us stuck in religion within this process of purification. Once you are purified and prepared, you can't go. You can't go back. You can't be engaged again. You can't prepare your wedding day again, like I said. So we need to shift our focus. You can just reiter reiterate and confirm your love for one another yes. continually, and yeah. affirm each other of your love, and affirm each other of the trust, and affirm each other of of um, uh, the relationship that that you have, and and likewise in like manner. That's what you affirm through the word with the Father, with, with, with Christ Jesus. You affirm His love and your love for Him every single day. It's, 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 it's not engaged, disengaged, engaged, disengaged. It's engaged to covenant, uh, covenantal uh, relationship in marriage. And once in covenant, you're in covenant. So in covenants, you, you, you are affirming and reconfirming day your love, your love for one another. And likewise with the Father and the Son, you're affirming it daily. So what I'm saying is don't get stuck in the season of preparation and sanctification. Grow from glory to glory. Move into this next season of walking in covenant with Him, which is, for me, Psalm 91. Psalm 91, do you want to share anything here? Because I want to go to Psalm No, I just uh, where, where, we, where, where we refer to the high priest was um, in Leviticus 16, 14 to 28, where the high priest would, would bring the atonement of the blood of a bull. Um, I just wanted to share the scripture and I just wanted to refer it uh, in the word there because I shared earlier and I didn't give the scripture just so that you know where the scripture is. Now that doesn't happen anymore. The atonement of the blood of Jesus Christ, Yeshua, uh, has replaced that of bulls and lambs and, 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 and goats and, and, and all this sort of stuff. So that, that no longer takes place. The atonement of the blood of Yeshua has given us the access 
to the throne, to the place, the Holy of Holies, to the secret place. Um, whereas the priest had to first atone through the blood of bulls to gain access once a year when he would sprinkle it and so forth. So you can go and read that in Leviticus 16 from verses 14 to 28. Okay, so what does it mean to walk in covenant? That was something I asked Abba. Um, Psalm 91 has been a scripture that he has engraved in our hearts all over our home. About 14, 15 years ago, we prayed and we asked Abba for a scripture for our family as an inheritance. If we pray over the children, he gave us Psalm 91. And as we grew in Psalm 91, as we started understanding, um, I was praying the one morning while writing this and asking Abba, but what does it then truly mean to walk with you in covenant? Once I get married to Quentin, everything changes. I move into his house or we bought a house together. Um, he becomes the head over me. Um, everything, I, I get his surname. Everything changes. I can't make my own decisions anymore. We're not two that needs to make a decision. Your signature um, changes. Your signature, everything my changes. bank account becomes your bank account. <laughs> That's your deal. We're sharing. <laughs> so, so, yes. So, ours, our, everything that belongs to Abba becomes ours and we become his. That is, that is the shift that happens within covenant when you get married there's 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 advantages there is um you grow together you sleep in one room you have children together there's fruit there's multiplication coming out of a relationship that moves from engagement into covenant everything multiplies everything doubles because it's not two it's no longer one and it's the same when we move into a covenant relationship so being in, in, in what I've seen is, and we've also been there, when you are engaged, there's an uncertainty in the natural sometimes. People will have that uncertainty. There's an uncertainty and they're still trying to please this person. So there's an uncertainty with just engagement or just a relationship. But once you are in covenant in marriage, there is, it's this binding contract in the natural that brings you a certainty of certain things. Um, like, for, for instance, no other woman can, I'll pray in any way, can take my husband because he's mine on contract, in contract. In, in. So there's a shift that takes place from engagement to, from a place of uncertainty to a place of covenant, a place of knowing that we are married, we are one, we share everything, we walk together, um, we do everything together. So there's that shift that Abba wants to bring us into. From a place of uncertainty of your identity, where do I fit in? Am I hearing correctly? Um, did I do that right? Do I need to repent of this again? That place of uncertainty is moving us into a place of established covenant where we truly know who we are. Where when the enemy comes in like a flood, he raises a standard up against him. When he comes in with a lie, then I say no. I know that is not true. Like it, last night when I prayed and Abba showed me things to pray for, I said to him, I said, Abba, I know that you speak to me. I know that you hear me. I know that when I pray, you hear me. You, you, you answer me. Um, the night before I prayed about something and immediately there was a result. So there's a shift that comes where sometimes when we're uncertain of our relationship with Him, when we're uncertain of who He is, of who we are, of our position in Him, we will pray and we will feel but He doesn't hear us. We will pray and we will feel that that we don't know, do we need to repent of this? Do we need to do this? Do we need to do that? So He wants to move us into the place of certainty, of knowing, of covenant. That we are in covenant, so no one can remove us from that place. Not even the enemy can remove us from this, that place. So it's a knowing, it's a, it's a revelation, it's a place of security. So then, it, it is actually so beautiful if you just if you just compare the two. Um, the one the one is flesh and the one is spirit, but there is similarities and they 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 symbolic. Uh, in the in a in a in a wedding arrangement um, um, between husband and wife, there are vows. A vow a vow is an oath, um, and there there are commitments and there are promises made. Um, there are there are. Uh, um, um, I'm just thinking of, of 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 the marriage vow: "Till death do us part." Um, in the word, when we when we are married to the Father, when we are His bride. Uh, and we have we have in, entered into that 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 
that covenant, that commitment. We've made vows. We've made oaths. We've committed our lives to the Father and to the work of the Father. Um, and, and in like manner, then, what is His is ours, the Word says. You know, the Word says, my Father owns a cattle on a thousand hills. All right? In like manner, because I'm His Son and, 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 and we are sons and daughters of the Father, we, we own that too. We are heirs. We are heirs and co-heirs. Uh, the word says, as Christ says, says, says. so, so there, there, that covenant, that vow that, that we make is a solid commitment, all right, that we make between husband and wife, but it's a solid commitment that we make between the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. It's a commitment that we make that should not be broken, all right, so it's a commitment that is life, uh, that is for life. So, in other words, your salvation gives you eternal life. So there is life after, after, after death, yeah, after your death here on earth. There is eternity that we long for. We long to be with the Father in eternity. So in like manner, we, we commit and we say, till death do us part here on earth. All right, this, is, this is an earthly commitment. But with the Father, we say, for life, uh, uh, I commit myself for, uh, uh, here on earth for eternity with you, Abba Father, with you, Jesus Christ. Yeshua, I committed for eternity. So that is the covenant that we have. So it, 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 is, it, is, it, is, it, is, it is not just a physical thing. It's a physical action, yes, but it has a spiritual effect uh, uh, right into eternity over your life now and into eternity forever and ever. Okay, so then I ask, Abba, but what does it mean to walk on earth in covenant? We know what eternity holds for us. We know where we are going. And then he took me to Psalm 91. So I read Psalm 91 for years and years and years. And the moment that he started speaking to me about covenant, and I understood covenant, I understood that I'm not engaged, I'm in covenant, this place of, of safety, this place of certainty, this place of knowing that he hears you. This place of knowing that He will provide for you. This place of knowing that, that He's there. Knowing that He's the ultimate. He's the King of Kings. There's a knowing inside of you once you understand covenant. Mm -hmm. And now if you go and read Psalm 91 with that understanding. With that in mind. Because a lot of people will say bad things happen to good people. I know bad things do happen to good people on earth, but there's always a legal right for the enemy to be able to steal. Psalm 91 tells me something else. So I always used to say, before having the understanding, I used to say that I believe that we can walk on this earth as it is in heaven. I truly believe. And that's how Yeshua walked on this earth. Whenever bad things tried to come to him and it wasn't his time yet, Abba protected him. Yes, he did have to go through the desert and he did have to face the Pharisees and he did have to... That's not what I'm mm. speaking about, but it, it, it's that knowing, that knowing that nothing... I said to a friend yesterday, nothing that happens in our lives is the enemy. We don't give Satan any glory in our lives because mm. our will allow certain things either to test our character and he will protect us within that season of training, even though it may be hard for the flesh... But always through that training and testing of character, there's breakthrough and there's, 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 um, you grow. There's a level of authority that comes with that. So I always say, whenever something challenging comes, it's not death, it's not stealing, it's not destroying, it's maybe a challenge, a tribulation, a testing of our character, I will never give the enemy glory for that. Because our hand, I know, when you walk in the promises of Psalm 91, when you walk in covenant, no other man can have any say over my life in the natural. I'm married to Quentin. I will not listen to any other man. It doesn't matter if it, it is um, if he's of high authority. If Quentin says, no, you are not allowed to... Um, go and minister today, which you will never do. I'm just giving an example. And somebody else will tell me, no, but um, this and this. And I will say, no, he, he's on earth. He's placed over me as my protection, as my uh, um, guidance, leading, helping, my helpmate. He's, protect, he's, he's given by the Father to me. So no other man can have authority over me. And it's the same with the Father. Once you move into covenant, no one else can have authority over your life. When you've laid your life down before Him, no one else can have authority over your life. Unless there are open doors for the enemy to come steal, kill, sin and destroy. And how does open doors come in? Through disobedience. So when the Father tells you to do something, let's say for instance He tells you today, don't 
don't drive that way to work, take another way to work. Um, and you don't listen, you're disobedient, you know you hear the Father, you're in covenant with Him, and you drive and somebody bumps into your car. That is not God, that is the, the, because of your disobedience and moving out of the shadow of His wings, the enemy came and he tried to, 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 um, to kill, steal and destroy because of your disobedience. So now let's read Psalm 91. In the manuals you'll see that there's a lot more about the, the, the elements that was inside the mercy seat. Um, the, the, the tablets, the manna, and the, the, the staff, the rod of Aaron. Um, you go, can go and read in read the manuals the yourself. meaning of that and go and study that for yourself. We want to end off with Psalm 91 today before we pray for everybody. And I hope if there's anything that was unclear in, in this teaching today, please email us. It's sometimes when you've got this revelation and understanding of, some, of something, um, I find it difficult sometimes to bring it across to make somebody else understand. And when that happens, I, I always know it's the Father wanting those who are hearing and listening to go and search it out for themselves. So it's, it's almost when, whenever I feel that, that, that struggle to just bring it into words of what we are experiencing and what we are knowing, it's that, that thing that Abba is saying, I'm just giving you a glimpse. I'm just giving you a nugget. Go and search it out for yourself. Go into the Word and search it out for yourself. You can, can, can go and read in the manual the rest of the things that we have written and shared there. So I'm going to read to you Psalm 91. Safety of abiding in the presence of God. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Dwells means, it doesn't mean you go in and out just when you need it. That's where you stay. That's where you stay. So we dwell in this home. We live in this home. We do everything in this home. Um, that is where you stay. So you dwell in His presence on earth. So wherever you move, His presence moves with you. He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Now when you look at the mercy seat within the Holy of Holies, there are two archangels with their, wi arch cherubims with their wings over the mercy seat. So what does that represent? The shadow of the Almighty mm, the under His wings, in, in His covering. You are seated within that place under His protection. You dwell there continuously. You are in His presence. You walk, when you walk on the street, you are in that place. When you minister, when you, unless you are disobedient, the only thing that can move you from that place into a place of danger is disobedience. Is when Abba tells you to do something, you're disobedient. Then you move out of that place of safety into like a chicken um, that's got little chicks. A hen. When, a hen. Yeah, a, a hen. hen. A mother that's hen that's got all the little chicks yes. and they all cluster and clucks so they are around her and she keeps them under her. And when an eagle comes, when an eagle comes, she will call them and they will come under her wings and the eagle won't see them. Okay? But when, if they don't listen, if there's one chick running around and he doesn't listen, he doesn't respond to a call, he's an open target for the eagle to catch him, for the enemy to catch him. It's the same. It's the same with God. So, Shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in Him I will trust. Surely He shall deliver you from the snare of the fowl and from the perilous pestilence, that is dreaded diseases, plagues, the season that we are in with all the plagues and all these things going on around us. When you are in the secret place, like in the ark, like Noah was, when you dwell in that secret place, when you dwell in that safe place, the storms will rage around you but it will not get close to you. You will be in it, but you will not be a part of it. He shall cover you with his feathers, feathers, and under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield and your buckler. You shall not be afraid of the terror by night, and that is exactly the season that we are moving into. And that is why Abba is calling us into this place of covenant relationship with him, where we truly understand what it means to dwell in his presence, on earth, if you, when you go to work, you are in His presence when you understand covenant. If you drive in your car, you are in His presence because you understand covenant. Nor the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness. So if the arrow, if, if you are, not if, we are now in covenant and we are walking under the shadow of His wings, under His protection. And if you are um, in that place and an arrow comes, who 
who will the arrow hit? Will it hit you or will it hit the, the shield that's protecting you? The shield. It obviously. won't hit you. It will hit the shield. It won't come close to you. Um, nor the pestilence that walks in darkness, nor of the destruction that lies waste at noonday. A thousand may fall at your side, and ten thousand at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Amen. Only with your eyes shall you look and see the reward of the wicked. Now, um, I think the King James says the day of the wicked. We are in that day. We are in that time where we will see the day. We will see these things happen around us. And we're seeing it. And we're seeing it. Just look around you. We're seeing the economies. We're seeing the sicknesses. We're seeing fear. We're seeing all these things. The but, world is being controlled by fear. And when you dwell in the secret place, so what I was saying is in the secret place, you are still on this earth, but you will see the day of the wicked, but it shall not come close to you. So that is a knowing that only comes with covenant and understanding that you are in covenant with 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 the uh, uh, with with God the Father that gave His Son that gave everything. We are in covenant with Him, so He will protect us and He will lead us and He will guide us. Because you have made the Lord, who is my refuge, even the Most High, your dwelling place. So all of these blessings will be yours because you have made Him your dwelling place. So when you move into covenant relationship on earth with your husband, you dwell with him in his house. You move with him into his house. So now because we are in covenant, we have made him our dwelling place. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. So do in all, if you are in the secret place and you dwell in the secret place, can any sickness come close to you? Can a plague come close to you? Even if you walk on this earth into an area where it's absolutely contaminated with sickness, can it come close to you? It can't. It can't. And that only comes with a knowing. That only comes with knowing that you walk in covenant with Him. Um, that, that If there's any question in your mind and you don't understand covenant, if there's any question in your mind about plagues and diseases that can come close to you, you need to ask Abba to reveal to you what it truly means to walk in covenant with Him. Um, for He shall give His angels charge over you to keep you in all your ways. In their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against the stone. You shall tread upon the lion and the cobra, the young lion and the serpent shall, you shall trample under foot. Because He has set His love upon me, because you have chosen to lay down your life for Him, because you have chosen that He is the only one that you love, that you adore, that you serve, that you live for, he will deliver him. I will set him on high because he has known my name. He shall call upon me and I will answer him. So whenever you pray, he will answer. When you are in covenant and you understand covenant, you will pray from that place to say, Abba, even if I pray something that does not make sense or I'm just sharing my heart, I know that you hear me. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. Now, with a long life, he will satisfy you. Can premature death come close to you? No. Nope. Earthly death. It can't. You will only go, pass on from this life to, to into eternity when it's your appointed time by the Father, when you understand what it means to walk in covenant with him. So, I really pray that... that it brought some enlightenment on, on the whole process and why this process of sanctification and purification because the end result is understanding covenant. The end result is walking Position. with Him, positioning in Him, being seated in Him, um, walking with Him, talking with Him, knowing Him, knowing that when you pray He hears you, moving into His house, moving into that position of authority um, and, and, and ruling and reigning on this earth as it is in heaven, representing His heart, representing who He is to this world, arising and shining with His light shining, uh, uh, rising within you so that those who are in darkness can be drawn to the rising of His light. So yes, we're going to pray and um, we're going to end off the session. And yes, I really believe that within the 21 weeks, your, 21 weeks, 21 episodes. 21 that's... episodes. If you've learned something, if there's any questions, feel, please feel free to 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 um to email us or to ask us. If anything's not clear, we are there. Um, yes. So may Abba bless you, may he keep you, may he make his face shine upon you, face shine upon you, and, and give you peace. and give you peace in everything that you do. Let's pray.
Heavenly Father, we just want to give you the honour and the glory for for this training material, Father, and for, for this purified course, Father, and the revelation and the understanding that you've brought through it. Father, you get all the glory. Jesus, we honour you. We commend you, Jesus, for sacrificing your life, laying down your life down for us, paying the price for us, giving us atonement through the blood to come to the throne of grace in obedience and to be seated in that place to have covenant with you father i just speak this over every person watching this clip father every person that has partaken of this um, training material father of purified seven times over father that they will be seated in you that they will seek you father that they will that they will write up the contracts on their hearts, Father, that their lips will confess, Father, that you are their one and only love, their first love, and that they will not lose their first love. Father, that they will commit themselves fully unto you, Father, dedicate their lives sincerely, full-heartedly unto you, Father, that they will not be moved, Father, by the things of this world, Father, but that they will be moved by the things of the Spirit, as you lead them and direct them, Father, in everything that they need to do. As they move, Father, in purification and sanctification, into holiness and righteousness before you, Father. Into obedience, Father, as you speak, Father. As you reveal things from the word unto them, Father. Father, let this be released over every single person listening right now. Every person who has partaken, Father. Father, that they will ultimately, Father, climb each step as the front page of this, of this manual shows, Father. Through the purification of the blood and the understanding thereof, Father, and, and with your guidance, Holy Spirit, your set-apart Spirit, that you will take them up step by step by step, purifying them, Father, as they enter in and enter through the door into that secret place, Father, as Psalm 91 has so, so eloquently shown us right now, Father, and revealed unto us, Father, that once we are in the secret place, we dwell there, we abide there, we stay there, we move back and forth within the boundaries and the security and the safety of that secret place, which is in you, Heavenly Father. So we thank you, Heavenly Father, that we can find comfort today in, in every area of our lives, knowing that we have a belonging, knowing that we have a destiny, knowing that we have a future based on your word, based on, on your love for us, Father. Corinthians 30, 1 Corinthians 13, Father. That the love of the Father will just dwell and abide in us so prominently, Father, that the commitment that we've made today as, as acknowledging that we are the bride, we are the bride of Christ, we have chosen you to be the groom, Father, that we are ready to enter into that commitment and we are ready to, to enter into that co covenant with you and that we will never, never lose focus. I thank you, Father, that you just release your anointing right now over each and every person that has partaken of this training and those that, those that shall come and join hereafter, Father, and that they will share this with family and friends, Father, and that you will get the glory, Father. You will get, uh, the souls will be added, Father. The, uh, the salvation will come, but Father, not just salvation, the revelation and the understanding of covenant shall, shall, shall be established today in the lives of every person listening. Father, so I just speak this over us right now, and I ask that your love and grace and mercy be poured out upon us. Let your name be glorified, Yeshua. Let your name be made great today. We give you all the honor and the glory. In the mighty name of Yeshua, I pray. Amen. 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 Shalom, everybody. Shalom, and be blessed. And um, this too shall continue as the Father reveals the next steps for us. Amen. From glory to glory. From glory Amen. to glory in His name. Amen. Amen.